today I'm going to teach you how to use the Lanza 4D Nucleofactor Kit. And so before we start, I just want to talk about uh, some of the different reagents that you can get from Lanza. And so there's different kits that you can buy and depending on which cell line you're using, uh, the actual kit and the reagents will vary. You just want to make sure that you're getting the appropriate kit that is compatible with the 4D nucleofactor, which is the model that we have here. So to start, uh, Lanza has different sets of buffer systems. So uh, in the farm talk scores here, we have a list of cell lines that have pre-optimized protocols. So this will tell you which kit you need to buy, as well as which electroporation protocol, which we'll talk about in a second, that you'll actually be running for your specific cell line. Now. If your cell line of interest is either not uh, been optimized in the past or if it's uh, a primary cell line that will either require a different kit or Lanza also sells optimization kits which includes uh, smaller sizes of each of their different buffer systems as well as the uh, disposable equipment necessary so that you can optimize your protocol based on the buffer as well as the electroporation protocol. So what actually comes in a kit? So here we have the SE cell line buffer kit, which is the one that uh, we've used here so far. Uh, and so in this kit, you have different solutions of your buffer as well as a GFP control plasmid. And so you will also need to provide your plasmid of interest when doing the nucleofaction. And so in addition to these components, there's also included these micropipetters that are sterile so you can transfer your cellular components. And so uh, these are actually very important to use because standard pipette tips do not fit into the nuclear cuvettes that they include. So you will actually need to use either these or other sterile pipettes that you have in your lab. So these are the actual apparatus that you'll be placing your cells into and they come in sterile packages. And so uh, this is just one version that they have. So this is for single nucleofection, you can just use uh, one cuvette per one experiment or however you want to run it, but this is a very low throughput method. They also have a higher throughput method, which we have the capabilities of running here that can run 16 uh, cell lines or electroporation protocols simultaneously. So in each of these devices, they have electrodes at the bottom that interact with some components inside of the actual nucleofactor itself. And so uh, it's just important to be sure that when you place your cells into the cuvette, they're in between those electrodes. So now we'll get into the actual protocol itself. So uh, depending on which buffer kit and which plasmid you're going to be transfecting, that is to be optimized and there's specific details in uh, the protocols that we have of how to do that for your specific cell line or what has been done in the past for the pre-optimized protocols. So the first step, just generally speaking, is to uh, take your cell line buffer and mix it with your plasmid of interest. So you can just mix this in an Eppendorf tube at whatever proportions uh, that you calculate out and what is uh, deemed necessary by the protocol. And so you have that set aside and ready to go whenever you are uh, about to run your nucleofection. And so after you've combined your buffer and your plasmid, then you want to spin down your cells in a, I like to use the 50 ml conicals just because it's a little bit easier to aspirate the media off of the top, but you want to spin them down at a slow speed around 90 G and the specific details of that should be included in the protocol uh, for the nucleofection. So it's very important to spin them down at a slow speed because if you spin them down at a higher speed, it could actually impact downstream viability of your cells. So Lanza does actually recommend that uh, you keep the speeds pretty slow. So the next step is aspirate off the media to your uh, excess media of your cells and you wanna get as much of it as you can off of your cells. So then you can add the buffer directly to uh, your cell pellet. And so 
Another thing that Lonzer recommends is very gently mix the cells only two to three times, and that should be sufficient for your electroporation protocol. So uh, just keep in mind that uh, the, the cells can be very sensitive to electroporation and roughly mixing the cells can make them unhappy and if they're about to be electrocuted, as is the nature of nucleofection, <laughs> uh, it can make them have decreased viability. So you wanna be really careful with your cells. So uh, the next step is once you have your mixture of your cells with your buffer and your plasmid, the next step is to actually take the cuvette. Uh, you can, I'm not gonna open up this one, but you open up the sterile uh, container and this should all be done in a tissue culture hood, by the way. I know we're not in one right now, but when you're actually using cells, this should all be a uh, sterile technique. And so, can we zoom in here on these cuvettes? So you want to transfer your cells in between the electrodes in this little gap. You don't want to place your liquid anywhere up here. You want So the reason they include these sterile pipettes is because they're small enough to fit in between the electrode plates at the bottom. So you want to dispense your cell uh, suspension directly in between the electrodes. And so if there's any bubbles, generally that's okay, but you want to minimize the amount of bubbles in um, the cuvette itself. And you can also uh, gently tap the cuvette on the counter to uh, even out the mixture. So that's really all the preparation that's necessary for these cells. So the next thing is you want to actually set up the machine. So uh, ideally you would have your machine and your protocol, you know which uh, protocol you're going to be running beforehand. So before you start the entire protocol of preparing your cells, you can uh, set up your machine. So as soon as you get your cells in the cuvette, they're ready to go. So uh, first, you just wanna flip the switch on the back of the machine, and then this blue light will turn on. And so the machine won't actually turn on until you hit uh, the power button. And so it'll run through its startup cycle, and it might take a couple seconds here. So this is the user interface of the Lanza Nucleofector. And so if you want to start a new protocol, the first thing you have to do is one, uh, choose which cuvette, either strip or the cuvette um, that I showed you before you're using. So there's different formats for uh, using the actual nucleofector protocol, but since we use the cuvette, we'll start with that. So you can name your experiment. We'll just call it demo. Okay, and then this is the actual uh, sample setup. Uh, display. So the first thing that we'll look at, it will select well A1. So when you're actually using the cuvette system, the wells that you are going to be referencing are A1 and A2. And so you'll see when we open up the drawer uh, why that is exactly. But there's two spots for cuvettes, so you can run two cuvettes at a time, and those correspond on this display to wells A1 and A2. And then the, <clears throat> the next step is to select your cell type. If your cell is one of the predefined uh, protocols that you have, so let's say we're using U937 cells, we can select that and it knows that this is the FS100 here. That's the electroporation protocol we're going to run. And then we're telling the Lanza machine that the cell line SF, that's the actual buffer. That's the name of the buffer that the cells have been suspended in. So then we hit apply and you can see that we've added these to our uh, plate map here. So we'll clear out of here and we'll go back to uh, a strip setup, which will actually be very similar to the cuvette setup, except now you can use the whole range of uh, the 16 wells for the 16 sets of electrodes that will come in the strip setup. And so with this, uh, you can uh, input different wells to whatever you want. So um, I think it's a little bit more intuitive for the 16 well setup. So it will correspond directly to the wells that you have 
but also important to note is if you need to customize your own protocol or uh, we don't have the protocol pre-programmed into the machine, you can tell the Lanza which electroporation protocol you want to run. So all of the electroporation you know, amplitudes and frequencies of the actual electricity are proprietary Lanza information and they only identify them as these two letter codes with uh, so two letters with the three number digits after them. So you can apply that and then these wells have been assigned uh, that code. So in addition, you also need to assign a solution. So as we mentioned before, there's several different buf buffer systems. So we'll just call these SE buffer and now we have uh, our buffer and our electro-operation protocol assigned to wells A1 and A2. So in addition, you can also run no DNA. You can tell the Lanza machine that there's no DNA in one of your wells. So for example, if you want to assign H1 as a, a no DNA, oh, sorry, we actually messed up here. So you also, you actually have to unselect the wells to uh, take them off. So if we want to reassign, we'll just call these this kind of cell, but then you have to unselect and select, for example, this well, and you can tell Lanza that this is not going to have DNA, or it is a no program run, which means that well will not get any electricity. So, th so these two programs can be used as, a, uh, as controls for your experiment. So once we have our entire plate, set up however you want it to be, then you hit the next button, and then the drawer opens up. And so um, you don't have to worry about which orientation because they actually only go in one way. So for the strip of 16, there's a, a notch at the top that will align with the uh, 16 well uh, strip. And so it actually won't sit in this uh, drawer unless you have it arranged right, but you just wanna make sure that it's actually fully in there before you close the drawer. And you'll know because the notch will insert into the strip. And so the same thing for the cuvettes. The cuvettes should be sitting, uh, they, there's a notch in front of the cuvette inserts here. And so there's only one way they should sit with the lid facing forward and they'll sit right in there. And so, uh, I'm not actually going to start the protocol, but once you hit start, the door will close. It'll run your protocol. Um, for a strip of 16, it really takes about 30 to 45 seconds to run all of the programs. And for a couple cuvettes, it'll only take about eight or nine seconds. So that's uh, more or less all we have with the instrument. After the run uh, completes, you can take your samples out and you can uh, use the sterile strip to then, uh, sterile pipette to remove your cells from the bottom of the cuvette and then transfer them into a tissue culture uh, media and then place them in the incubator and allow them to recover for whatever downstream applications you're going to be using. Okay, so now your cells are back in the incubator and we have to talk about how to shut the machine down. So there's a power switch in the back and so you don't actually want to hit that before you have shut down the system itself, otherwise you'll get an error message. So you hit the settings in the upper right corner and then you hit shut down. And then are you sure you want to shut down? Yes. And so it'll run through its shutdown cycle. That noise is actually the uh, transport bolt that screws in for when it needs to be in transit. That's what happens when it shuts down. And then once the screen turns off, this blue light should stay on, meaning that the power's uh, on in the back. And so you can reach behind and you can flip the switch and then the blue light should turn off and then uh, that will be the end of it.